Hi, I am Dr. Sakir Mansoor and this is my channel Learning Anatomy for You. And uh, after discussing uh, knee joint and the hip joint anatomy, and uh, today I will discuss with you the ankle joint and uh, in detail. So you see these are the ankle joint pictures and uh, here you could see this. This is the ankle joint formation. As you see uh, my laser. Uh, this is from above tibia and fibula. They are malleoli the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus and this is from below the talus and this is the upper, upper surface the trochlea which articulates in the joint here this mortise is formed right between the two malleoli which grip this mortise so i will uh, tell all these things in detail so the type of the joint ankle joint is also called telocrural articulation is a hinge type of synovial joint it is located between distal ends of the tibia and fibula and the superior part of the talus. Articular surfaces are covered with hyaline cartilage. Shape of the bone and the strength of the ligaments and the surrounding tendons make this joint strong and stable. So, this joint, ankle joint is strong and stable. Why? Due to the I mean, uh, strength of the ligaments mainly and the shape of the bones which forming the tibial mortise fitting into the um, on sides to the uh, malleoli. Ankle joint may be felt between tendons on the anterior surface of the ankle as a minor depression about one centimeter proximal to the tip of the medial malleolus. I have discussed this picture with you. You can already uh, go back. So the distal articular surfaces of the ankle joint the distal end of the tibia and fibula together together with the inferior transverse part of the posterior tibiofibular ligament form a malleolar mortise into which fits a pulley-shaped trochlea of the talus. So the trochlea in Latin means pulley. It is a rounded superior articular surface of the talus. The medial surface of the lateral malleolus articulates with the lateral surface of the talus. I've shown you already and I show you again here you could see this is the inferior articular surface of the tibia this is the inferior view of the tibia and fibula and this is the lateral malleolar articular surface of the fibula these articulate with the i mean uh, talus the trochlea and this is uh, the superior view of the you know talus this is talus and this is trochlea and this is a portion is for tibia this trochlea and this for lateral malleolus of uh, you know fibula tibia articulates with talus in two places its inferior surface forms roof of the malleolar mortise thus transferring the body's weight to talus its medial malleolus articulates with the medial surface of talus I've shown you already these things this is another picture for elaborate um, description of the talus uh, this is talus. You can see this various portions. This is head of the talus, neck. Uh, this is a trochlea we are concerned right now. You can see the bluish uh, to show the high line cartilage coverage. Right? So this is a groove for flexor hallucis longus. We'll talk about later. It also has a tubercles, medial and the lateral tubercle, right? So we are concerned with this trochlea. Malleoli. Grip talus tightly as it rocks in the mortise during movements of the ankle joint. This spreading is limited mainly by the strong and tibio tibiofibular ligament and also the anterior and posterior tibiofibular ligaments that serve to unite tibia and fibula. So I show you this intrusious tibiofibular ligament. This is the intrusious tibiofibular ligament. This is tibia and this is fibula and this is the um, ligament holding the bones, uniting them together in tibio tibiofibular ligament. And uh, here you see this again. This is the picture, right? Stable position of the joint. Let's discuss that. During dorsiflexion of the ankle joint, what happens? Wider anterior part of the articular surface of talus is forced between the two malleoli causing them to separate slightly and make the ligaments of the distal tibi tibiofibular joint taut. This arrangement greatly enhances stability of the ankle joint when the foot is in initial position for major 
thrusting movements in walking running and jumping so the dorsiflexion position is stable one so intraosseous ligament is placed deeply between almost congruent surfaces of tibia and fibula relative unstable position of ankle joint is during plantar flexion because trochlea is narrower posteriorly and therefore lies relatively loosely in the mortise so the stable position is that of the dorsiflexion and the relatively unstable position of the ankle joint is plantar flexion it is uh, during this position of plantar flexion that most injuries of the ankle joint commonly as a result of the sudden unexpected and thus inadequately resisted inversion of the foot so now the joint capsule of ankle joint joint is enclosed in a capsule that is lined with synovial membrane capsule gets attached to the articular ligament margin of all the three bones except the anterior part of the talus where it is fixed some distance in front of the articular margin on the neck of the bone so three bones are again i am telling you uh, the for clarity purpose a crystal clear concept the you know talus um from below the trochlea and uh, the um, second one is the tibia and the third is fibula posteriorly the capsule on its way up to the tibula um not tibia gets attached also to the posterior tibiofibular ligament joint capsule of ankle joint is thin anteriorly and posteriorly but on each side is supported by strong lateral and medial collateral ligaments so we show you the details pictures of these two ligaments fibrous layer of capsule is attached superiorly to the borders of the articular surfaces of the tibia and both the malleolus and inferiorly to the talus these are you can see this is the medial collateral ligament three parts and this is the lateral collateral ligament three parts i will discuss soon now the synovial membrane synovial membrane lines the fibrous layer of the capsule and is lax synovial cavity commonly extends superiorly between tibia tibia and fibula as far as the intraosseous tibiofibular ligament so here are much awaited the ligaments very very important ligaments of ankle joint laterally ankle joint is reinforced by a lateral ligament of ankle it is compound structure that consists of three completely separate ligaments so the lateral lig collateral ligament has three separate ligaments right number 1 anterior talofibular ligament let's check that this is the anterior tibio this sorry this is the, here you go this uh, anterior talofibular ligament right this is the anterior talofibular ligament from the uh, our talus to the fibula anterior talofibular ligament and second is the posterior talofibular ligament this is posterior talofibular ligament from the talus to the fibula this is this is the lateral ligament and the third part is the calcaneofibular ligament here you could see this is a calcaneo fibular ligament from the calcaneus bone to the your fibula so a little bit detail anterior talofibular ligament flat weak ligament that extends anteromedially from lateral malleolus to the neck of the talus posteriorly talofibular ligament a thick quite strong band that travels horizontally medially and a little posteriorly from the malleolar fossa to the lateral tubercle of the talus this is posterior talofibular third calcaneo fibular ligament a round ligament that travels posteriorly inferiorly from the tip of the lateral malleolus to the lateral surface of the calcaneus this is the calcaneo fibular ligament right and now the medial ligament medial collateral ligament the joint capsule gets reinforced by the large strong medial ligament of the ankle it is also called as the deltoid ligament deltoid ligament that attaches proximally to the medial malleolus medial ligament fans out from the medial malleolus attaching distally 
telus calcaneus and navicular via four adjacent and continuous parts so first of all is a tibio navicular part first identify that the tibio navicular here you could see this is the tibio navicular this is the navicular bone and it's going to the tibia right tibio navicular and the second is a tibio calcaneal part this is the tibio calcaneal ligament here you could see this tibio calcaneal ligament right sorry this uh, uh, this is still tibio calcaneal uh, was here tibio calcaneal ligament and the third is the anterior tibiotalar part anterior tibiotalar part here you could see this from talus to the tibia anteriorly and the fourth is a posterior tibiotalar part here you could see it, posterior tibiotalar Medial ligament acts to stabilize the ankle joint during eversion and it also prevents subluxation of the ankle joint. So, mainly responsible for the strength of the joint. So, now the movements of ankle joint. Dorsiflexion in this toes pointing upwards. You could see this is the dorsiflexion and this is the foot and this is the toes. So, they point upwards. This is dorsiflexion. And in plantar flexion, this is the toes pointing downwards. Plantar flexion occur around a transverse axis that passes through the talus. This is the transverse axis passing through the talus. Movements of inversion and eversion occur at the tarsal joint and not at the ankle joint. Right? So, inversion and eversion do not occur at the ankle joint. They occur at the tarsal joint. As the narrow end of the trochlea of the talus is placed loosely between the malleoli, malleoli when the foot is plantar flexed, small amounts of inversion, inversion, adduction, and abduction can occur in this unstable position. Excess of rotation is not fixed but alters between the extremes of plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So, the movements upper facet of talus slightly concave from side to side is convex anteroposteriorly. It is broad anteriorly and narrow posteriorly. Full dorsiflexion, broad anterior articular area of talus is gripped by the mortise constituted by the malleoli and inferior surface of the tibia. It requires widening of the malleolar gap through a slight lateral rotation of fibula by stretching at inferior tibiofibular syndesmosis and some gliding at superior tibiofibular joint. Full plantar flexion. The smallest area of talus is in contact with both malleoli and distal tibia. But note that even in this position, inversion and eversion are not possible at the ankle joint. For all practical purposes, ankle is regarded as a true hinge joint. So, it's a true hinge joint permitting the dorsiflexion and the plantar flexion. Never there occurs inversion and eversion, whether it be the plantar flexion or dorsiflexion. So, axis of rotation again, some few words about that. It's not horizontal, but slopes downwards and laterally. It travels through lateral surface of the tail, it's just below the apex of the triangular articular area and through the medial surface at a higher level just below the concavity of the coma shaped articular area. It travels to both the malleoli just above their apices. Axis varies during movement for the upper convexity of the talus is not the arc of a circle but rather of an ellipse. Obliquity of the axis involves the minor movement that resembles inversion in full plant flexion and the Reverse that resembles slight eversion in full dorsiflexion. But these apparent movements are never of true inversion and eversion. From upright position, when the foot is foot at right angles to the leg, active plantar flexion of about 20 degree is brought about by soleus and gastrocnemius, helped by long flexor tendon and the long and short peronea. Active dorsiflexion of about 10 degrees is brought about by tibialis anterior and long toe extensors and peroneus tertius. 
the degree of the passive movements possible is about double the above. That you mean this is 40 and this is 20. So the muscles producing movements, dorsiflexions brought about by tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, extensor digitorum longus, and fibularis tertius. Dorsiflexion limited by tension of the tendocalcaneus, posterior fibers of the medial ligament, and the calcaneofibular ligament. So the muscles producing plantar flexion, gastrocnemius, soleus, plantaris, fibularis longus, fibularis brevis, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus. Plantar flexion limited by the tension of the posing muscle, the anterior fibers of the medial ligament, and the anterior telofibular ligament. So, I also talk about uh, some important relations of the ankle joint. Anteriorly, so what's lying anteriorly? This is the ankle joint cross section, and here you could see this is the anterior aspect, and you can see what is lying over here. This is the tibialis anterior, and extensor hallucis longus, and extensor digitorum longus, and the fibularis tertius, right? You could see this is the dorsal spedis artery and uh, it's a continuation of the anterior tibial artery, right? These are the anterior relations. And then the posteriorly, these two, uh, the tendocalcaneus and the plantar, plantaris tendon. These are the two relations, plantaris and the tendocalcaneus lying posteriorly. This is the ankle joint. And uh, then the posterolaterally, Fibularis longus and previous, yeah, fibularis previous and longus, so posterolaterally. And posteromedially, behind the medial malleolus, these are the relations. Let's check that. You spot it out in the diagram. It's a beautiful diagram. Tibialis, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, posterior tibial vessels, tibial nerve, and flexor hallucis longus, right? These are there. And the blood supply of the ankle joint. The arteries are derived from the malleolar branches of the fibular and anterior and posterior tibial arteries. And the nerve supply of ankle joint. The nerves are derived from the tibial nerve and the deep fibular nerve at the end of the common peroneal nerve. I thank you very much for listening and watching to my uh, this lecture of ankle joint. And uh, please do subscribe my channel. Stay um, healthy and goodbye. Thank you very much.